Thank you so much, lovely Palessa. Now, our first guest today is author Timothy. Timothy Maurice Webster, who has four best-selling books on human and brand behavior. Now, having worked between America and Africa for the past decade, his work explores the evolving trends in neuroscience and how professionals and organizations should think when it comes to identity, brand power, and human behavior. And today we have the pleasure of picking his brain because he's right here on our couch. Timothy, so good to have you in the it's studio. Good to be here. Thank you so much. So you prefer to go by Timothy Maurice as yeah. opposed to Timothy Maurice Webster. Yeah, I just kind of, first of all, it's shorter. And it, it, yes. And it's also just kind of, it kind of stuck when I moved here. People started calling me Timothy Maurice. I think a guy named TK started yeah. calling me Timothy Maurice and it just kind of stuck. <laughs> I love it, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But let's just contextualize for all of our viewers at home. What exactly is branding and why is it so important? So when people think about Leanne, there's a story they have in their mind. Yeah. Like there's somebody right now thinking about you and smiling. Mm -hmm. It's that story that sits in people's minds that can be leveraged for value. Wow. So in a product's case, it can be leveraged, let's say a shoe brand. It can be leveraged to make people feel like they can just do it. Or if it's a person, it can be used to inspire people to have more confidence in that person, to inspire them to want to hire that person. Or in a case like with you, you align it to a particular brand, you get more revenue, more sponsorship because you're here. Yeah. So the ability to use a story to leverage for value, and it could be money. But that's so powerful because let's start at the beginning. I mean, you've come from a journey from understanding the human brain, the unconscious, like we said, neuroscience. Why did you decide to specifically focus on personal and, of course, you know, business branding? So I come from a crazy family. I don't know. Is your family... I feel all families have craziness okay. in okay. them. Okay. So I've got three uncles that really sums it up. Yeah. I've got an uncle who uh, is a pastor, like one of those mega church. Mm -hmm. You know in America those... Yeah. Ha! Yeah! <laughs> Ha! One of yes, those type of yes. creatures. And then I've got an uncle that spent most of his life in prison. Mm -hmm. And I've got an uncle that's a federal judge. Wow. What and a so, wide spectrum. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I was fascinated by how they, they evolved and what happened in their brain. But I was also interested in how their names influenced how and who they became. Mm -hmm. So watch this. So I'm going to give you the three names and you tell me which one was in prison. Okay. James, Joe, Billy Jack. Wow, my first inclination would go with Billy Jack was in prison. Yeah, well, he was. So I'm <laughs> interested, James, the book of James in the Bible, yeah, yeah. ended up becoming the pastor. Yeah. So I was intrigued by how their names influenced what they became. And I learned later that your names influence your subconscious reality. Wow. So then I became curious about what are the other influences. And your personal brand is one of those influences. How you see your brand impacts how you see yourself mm -hmm. and how other people see you. So we all have this inherent sense of our story. Plato argues that we all have in our subconscious mind what our best self looks like. Yeah. So you have a branded idea in your subconscious mind. What is your perfect self? What do they look like? What does your hair look like? You know, what, what do you drive? You know, how healthy are you? And however far you are from that is your personal branding journey in your own mind. Yeah. So you're always trying to position yourself closer to your ideal self. Yeah. And that became interesting. All the complexities around it, you know, what we do to try to get closer to that best self, and then how we translate that to the world. This is a powerful message because I don't think, do people realize that we're all really just walking billboards? Every single day, it's like you've got this billboard attached to you. What does the world see you as? What is the yeah. story that you're telling? How do we as individuals ensure that this billboard is reflecting who we really are? So my latest book is called Personal Brand Intelligence, yeah. published by Indalo Media. And I broke that book down into three parts. And, and I framed it as your body one, body two, and body three. Your body one is the internal part of you. It's your values, your spirituality. It's what the found, your foundation is built on. Yeah. And then you have your body two, which is your image, your aesthetic, how you behave, how you deliver. It's what we can see, yeah. right? Your body two is looking good, by the way. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank then you very much. There's body three. <laughs> Leg day. Yes. There's body three, which is what you're associated to, your um, everything that's aligned to you. Uh, you know, the fact that you work here, your partners, your family, everything you're associated to. That's your body three. So you want to go through each one of these bodies and be clear. What are my values internally? Yeah. Two, what do I want my image to be? 
And three, who do I want to associate to? Wow. Who do I want to partner with? And then you start bringing those together and you start to get that story of who you are and what you represent. You can't say I've got a disciplined body one yeah. and then your external looks a mess. Yeah. If you want your body one to be known as creative, mm -hmm. then you need to have an image that's creative. Mm -hmm. If you want your body uh, two to be rebel yeah. and you want to look like a rebel, yeah. then you have to have a rebel attitude and a rebel value system. So it just needs to be congruence. It's not about looking perfect or looking right. It's about having that alignment and then starting to seek in partnerships. So if you're an influencer, start looking for brands that will appreciate these bodies, mm -hmm. that will appreciate the fact that you are bold and courageous and you're revolutionary yeah. and that you want to be associated with this type of way. Yeah. The word that kind of just pops out from what you were saying is authenticity. Yeah. You know, be authentically yourself. Yeah. I don't know if you all understand what that means, but let's talk about the power of social media and the age <laughs> of the gram. Yeah. You know, how can social media ev either help to build a brand or diminish a brand? Yeah, so social media is this sort of ever-present news feed where you get a chance to show your value to the world. So there's a term in science called patternicity. And patternicity means that we seek patterns to suggest and find out who people are. Yeah. So if I go through your page right now, I will try to put the dots together to determine what your value system is. Mm. So I'm looking for patterns. Wow. So I think everybody should go and do a personal brand audit in a social media. Oh, wow. Send your link in your page to someone okay. and ask them what are the patterns, what is the story that comes out. Okay. Does it speak to what you really want to be known for? Mm. But what you can do in this space is that you can decide what versions of yourself, because we've got many levels and dynamics in all of us. Yeah. What version do you want to show the world? Do you want to show the world the professional, articulate person? Yeah. Do you want to show the person, the, 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 literally the, the kind of ratchet twerking self? Because we all have those selves. Yeah. Do, you, do you twerk? I, I can't twerk. You can't so, twerk? No, no, okay. no, I can't. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll work on it, though. <laughs> yeah, well, so, so we all have these versions. you got to decide what you want to show yeah. and how do you want to position that. And companies are starting to look for people who have a clear story wow. that they can align with. So whether you want to be a receptionist, mm -hmm. a company does not want ratchet on yes. their social media to be associated. Yes. So if you block your page, then some companies are thinking you're hiding something. You are, yeah. So I would suggest to people they have a private page and a public page. If you want to use your page to build a brand, to be able to show companies, show people um, what you stand for and what you're about, you can create a clear LinkedIn page that has a clear messaging that can support your goals and your dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, but I suggest that you try to use it yeah. or you decide I'm going to go completely private. I'm just going to work on my stuff because I don't really need that. Yeah. I don't need that space. And some people don't. They have careers that don't need that kind of leverage. Well, that's powerful stuff. Oh, Timothy Maurice Webster in the house. I feel so super inspired. Thank you so much. But you're going to be you. with us a little bit longer oh, okay. uh, in the loft today. We're talking about branding. Do you understand the concept? And if you've listened, I'm sure by now we can all grasp exactly how important it is to be absolutely authentic. Palesa, I can tell you that your brand is looking really good.